Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome to another Sparky devlog. So I'm going to keep this one short. Um, it's been quite an eventful week. I've done quite a few things that I wanted to get done, which is good. Uh, the first thing um, I did was, in fact, I don't even remember where we were at last week, but basically I added the cube uh, mapping configuration for DirectX. So now DirectX can load um, texture cubes here, as you can see. Uh, it's a little bit different with uh, DirectX and it is with OpenGL mainly because of the way that it wants the data packed um, and in, in the end you do just create texture 2 days because the thing is apart from creating um, just cube maps remember we're not taking in just like six images or just a single kind of cross right so for example what I mean by that is if we look at sandbox we've got um, under PBR and cube map you know, we're not taking in like a single one of these, right? Um, it's, we're actually taking in like, you know, 11 of them in this case, um, because they are the different MIPS, right? And you actually have to supply the MIPS um, because uh, otherwise, like if, if we get it to generate them for us, it's not gonna look anywhere near as good and we're gonna be able to notice seams uh, in the edges of the cube map. So. We need to we need to supply the MIPS, which is the standard way of doing things anyway. Like if you look at director all surfaces, so those are the dot uh, DDS files. Those contain like all the MIPS for a texture packed into them immediately, and you can kind of generate them using the DirectX texture tool. Now I'm not using any of that stuff. Um, that's actually quite an old thing anyway. Uh, I'm not using any of that stuff, of course, because we're not primarily focus on DirectX and that's not really the only API we're using anyway. Not that you couldn't get a direct raw surface file to work with OpenGL. That's absolutely, it's, it's very, very straightforward to do that. Um, it's just that I, I don't really want to uh, subject myself to DirectX tools or anything like that. Um, so eventually I probably picture it because having, you know, so many MIPS, um, I mean, you can see there's actually uh, the same MIP in like different formats here, but having 11 MIPS uh, for a 1024 by 1024 cube map, and then, you know, having to maintain even separate MIPS for just texture two days is gonna be a bit of a chore. So I think that um, more or less eventually when Sparky probably has its own image format um, and its own texture format, uh, that is probably when uh, we'll talk about maybe having a tool that will autom automatically generate all the MIPS for us. Um, or that we can supply, you know, every MIP level and it will actually output a single file for us, which Sparky will then read. That That's a possibility in the future. Obviously for something like, um, if we look at GL Texture 2D, uh, we've got it generating MIP maps uh, automatically for 2D textures. And for the most part, for 2D textures, I would say it's totally reasonable to get automatic MIP map generation. Um, I'm trying to get it to work in DirectX, which is proving difficult because uh, DirectX really isn't meant for MIP map generation. Like you're supposed to kind of provide that stuff kind of offline or calculate that stuff offline and then generate it. So I am generating them here and there are a few things here based on whether or not we're generating MIP maps, but it doesn't seem to actually work as of right now. and. I didn't really spend too much time on it. But anyway, um, yeah, mint maps and just textures and all of those kind of things are something that ideally, again, would be stored in a, in a, in like a, a custom format specifically for the engine. Uh, that's usually the, the, the way to go. Um, obviously we would still support, you know, un unlike model formats where I'm really reluctant to support anything except for the Sparky model format, especially because it's so easy to convert anything into Sparky, right? You just you just click and drag um, a model file onto the build tool, onto um, the SPM build tool, and it will just automatically output you an SPM file. Uh, but for textures, uh, I can see obviously how it might be a bit annoying that anytime you create a texture, you have to... Um, convert it into the right format and like you have to talk, you have to generate mint maps for it and there might be like this whole thing. So I don't really wanna, it will be an option there and that, that's something that you should use for probably, um, especially for 3D, right? When you're making all your textures. Uh, however, I'm probably just gonna accept like PNG, TGA stuff anyway. All right, cool. So that's the idea right now. Um, the biggest thing that I've done though is uh, the PBR implementation. So the physically based rendering implementation is now working 
uh, on DirectX, like for DirectX, right? So DirectX PBR is basically complete. Uh, there are still a few things missing from Sparky physically based rendering in general, uh, namely stuff like um, ambient occlusion maps and uh, emiss uh, emissive maps, right? There, there are a few things here and there that are kind of missing that I do want to add, but it's just not the highest priority right now. So if we do go to sandbox, we can see that we are running in direct 3D mode. If I hit F5, uh, you'll be able to see um, the sandbox. Uh, the other thing I added was a cube map, or like a skybox rather, so you can actually see the skybox that you're in, right? Uh, and if we, um, yeah, I mean, this is, as you can see, running in Direct 3D11. So there we go. Uh, the only thing is the normals look, as you can see, the normals look very grainy, and that's just because, again, that normal map is not being mapped properly. Uh, that's the reason that's not working. Uh, but you can see general, like the cube map MIPS are obviously working. You can see how those um, uh, spheres here look very nice and the plastics here as well, the red ones. Uh, everything seems to be in order. The other thing that I added really quickly is um, a first person camera. So there, there has been an FPS camera for a while and that's something that I just chucked in, but I actually did it properly now. Um, so it's kind of similar to the Maya camera in, the ter in terms of like it is correctly done. It's not like a hack. Um, so if I uh, hit C here, you can you can use C by the way to, to toggle between like a first person camera and the Maya camera, yeah, uh, in test uh, 3D. And you can see that um, you can move around, shift kind of makes you move a lot faster. Um, uh, control and space go up and down. You can obviously look anywhere you want and generally it works really well and I actually quite like it for looking at stuff. Uh, I think it's quite nice. Um, not to mention the fact that there are two cameras now, so you can actually just position this wherever you want and then, you know, position this, for example, on the, on the other side of the cube. Uh, and you can see that I can kind of uh, switch between them, which is kind of cool. Uh, anyway, um, that's the way that that cookie crumbles. Uh, and then of course escape will release the mouse so that you can use the debug menu uh, and close the game or do whatever you want. Um, so that still, of course, works uh, quite nicely. Uh, and then right click again will capture the mouse so that you can move around. All right, cool. So that's the first person camera uh, that I added. And then finally, yeah, there is the skybox. Now the skybox is done very easily. Um, there's not really much to it. Drawing a skybox in general is very easy to do. There are two main ways to do it. There's the uh, first way, which is by drawing a cube and then just sampling the cube map at the cube uh, from the cube vertices, which is the bad way of doing it. It's not really horrible or anything. It's just a bit unnecessary because, um, well, because yeah, then there's also the sphere method as well, how you can just draw a large, like uh, you can render a large sphere with the back faces, well, with the, with the, with the faces like pointing inwards. So an inside out sphere and then just sample as well. Um, or there, there's the normal way, I think, or the good way to do it, uh, it which is just simply to draw a quad um, and then sample. So you can see that I, I create a skybox here. Uh, I'm just creating a quad um, with the projection matrix of that and the uh, size of that. So it's from negative one to positive one, one. Um, and then all I'm doing is there's a shader for it called a skybox shader. And then all that does is uh, it, uh, well, it does use the inverse view projection matrix and then just samples using the position, right? So it's really simple to do. And then this is the lot that it's sampling or the mitmap map uh, that it's sampling. So it's, I'm not gonna get into how this works now, but basically all we're doing here is we're multiplying the vertex positions, which is the negative one, positive one stuff um, against the, in, the inverse, the inverse of the view projection, right? So that way you get the inverse of the view projection of the camera, right? Uh, which is what we're generating here. Um, and then, yeah, all we're doing is we're using those uh, outputs to sample the cube map. And then what we get is really, even though it's just a quad, um, we're just sampling the texture at the right spots. So in terms of geometry, all we're rendering is a quad, but you can see that um, obviously we get a skybox. So that's the way that that works. Um, it's uh, probably the the proper way to actually uh, render a skybox. Um, but anyway, that that's it. I don't think there's anything else to add. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you want to support Sparky and get this and get this code early, then um, there'll be, uh, you can hop over to patreon.com forward slash the channel. There'll be a link in the description. 
and you can get it uh, that way. Um, and then finally, the thing, the other thing that I wanted to mention, well, firstly, here's Patreon. So if you pledge $5 or more per month, you get access to this uh, version repository, which has all this code that isn't on, on GitHub yet. Uh, and then finally, I am preparing a GitHub release. So if you go to uh, bit.ly forward slash Sparky Trello to look at the Sparky Trello board, um, you can see there's a March GitHub release checklist. We'll probably make March, I imagine. We've still got, yeah, I mean, we've still got like a week and a half. So we should make March. Uh, but if you click on the checklist, you can see kind of what... Um, what I'm working on, right? So DirectX, PBR is done, Skybox is done. The other stuff that I need to do still over the next week is gonna be OpenGL PBR, so getting that to work, because I believe that that's broken right now. I'm mainly, I was mainly focusing on DirectX. Also like the Skybox for OpenGL doesn't even exist yet, as in like the shader for it doesn't. You can see there's only an HLSL shader. Um, there's, uh, I need to convert my maths into row major because that's a bit more optimal. And then it just means that rather than transposing our matrices to put into DirectX, we'll be transposing our matrices when we put them into OpenGL. Uh, just because CPU side, uh, generally row major, uh, like uh, matrix multiplication uh, is a lot faster than column major. Uh, converting forward render to use system uniforms because it's currently just using material uh, user uniforms. Um, uh, there's a forward, there's a memory leak and forward renderer, which I like the memory leak is this, right? It's the command queue where we actually, when we submit a mesh, we allocate these bytes and we, well, we never delete them, uh, because there's no real proper way to do that yet. Um, but I need to sort out this whole command queue situation. So really that's going to be quite a difficult task. Well, not a difficult task, but I'm going to have to make a proper like command buffer. Um, filled with these render commands that are actually uh, <laughs> that are actually properly processed, um, and then finally, yeah, the, there's the 2D mitmap generation that I want to get done in DirectX. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.